Hello friends, this video on current electricity part 22 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 21 before going ahead with this one. So here comes resistors. So what are resistors? I don't need to explain it much because the name itself suggests what are resistors. Till now we studied about resistance. So resistance was the property of a conductor to resist current. So resistor is an object which, re which resists the flow of current. That is an, an object which provides resistance. So resistors resist the flow of current. So when I talk about types of resistors, we basically have two types of resistor. One is wire bound resistor and the other one is carbon resistor. I am not sure if you have observed wire bound resistor in your laboratories or not but carbon resistors are something which are very common. I am very sure that you have already seen these carbon resistors. Right? So what are wire bound resistors and what are carbon resistors? Wire bound resistors are made up of alloy. I am sure you know what an alloy is. Alloy is nothing but a mixture of metals. When two or three or even more types of metals are taken into some proportion and mixed together, they form an alloy. So wire bound resistors are basically made up of alloy. Some alloy is taken and it is wind, wires of alloy are winded over and over again to form a resistor. These kind of resistors are mostly used in car braking system, in railway track system. Why? Why do we use this kind of resistors? Because alloys have a specific property. The resistivity of alloy does not change with temperature. I mean the resistivity of alloy is insensitive to temperature because we saw in our previous slides that for metals the resistivity increases with increase in temperature, right? But in case of alloys, they, they are constructed in such a way that their resistivity is insensitive to temperature and because of this property, they are used in wire bound resistor and because of this specific property, these wire bound resistors are used in railway track systems or in car braking system. In the brakes of your car, if you see the internal structure of your car, the braking system uses these kind of resistors. So its application is in car braking system, railway tracks and what is the property that makes it useful in these scenarios is resistivity of alloys are insensitive to temperature. Right? So that is all about wire bound resistors. When I talk of carbon resistors, they are basically, they basically have compact, uh, they basically have carbon composition. They are made up of carbon. Now we know that carbon is a good conductor of electricity. So higher the level of carbon, lower is the resistivity. So more you have carbon inside the resistor, more is the carbon content. So lower is the resistivity. Right. So these carbon resistors have certain advantages like they are quite compact. If you look at these resistors, they are small pieces, very light and very easy to carry, portable. So they are compact. They are also very, very inexpensive. They are very cheap. I mean, even today you can buy these resistors for some pesos. It is not even a rupee for a resistor. So they are very inexpensive and they are very compact and very easy to handle and use. But the disadvantage with carbon resistor is that they cannot withstand very high temperature because with increase in temperature, the resistivity changes. There is a good variation in the resistivity with increase in temperature. And because of this disadvantage, carbon resistors are not used in car braking systems or railway tracks. We mostly use these carbon resistors in small electric circuits and stuff like that. You will also, you also perform your experiments in the lab using these carbon resistors. Right? So broadly these were, these are the two types of resistors. However, there are many other kinds of resistors also available. But as of now, we will we just discuss these two kinds. Now, as we go ahead, we will now discuss how do we determine the value of resistance 
by looking at a carbon resistor. Now we will talk mostly about carbon resistor. So if I have a carbon resistor, how will by just by looking at the resistor, how do I know how much resistance does, does this resistor offer? Whether it is 10 ohms, whether it is 20 ohms or whether it is 2000 ohms. So how do I know that? So there is something called color coding. Color coding is done to make it convenient for the user to know how much is the resistance of a resistor. So carbon resistors normally will have different colored bands. They will have different rings like this. As you can see in this figure, this is these are the different rings and they will be of different colors. And each color has a specific meaning. Each color convey you something. So by looking at these colors, you can calculate the value of resistance of this resistor. So by looking at this color, you can calculate how much resistance this resistor offers. Right. So how do we do that calculation? How do we know how much, what is the resistance of a resistor? So let us look at the carbon, uh, the color coding part. So there is a convention which we normally follow. If you look at the list of colors, these are normally the colors which you observe on your carbon resistor. Now each of these colors represent a number. So you write down these colors and then they represent 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And this gold and silver are something special which I will tell you later. Okay. So how do you remember this? It is very difficult to remember, okay, black is, zero is for black, one is for brown, two is for red and so on and so forth. So how do we remember this? We have a very popular abbreviation for this, which is very easy to remember. We remember it like this. We say B, B, Roy of Great Britain has very good wife. So this is B. B. Roy of Great Britain has very good wife. So this is an easy way to remember the sequence. So once you remember the sequence, this is nothing but 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? So you can very easily know which one stands for which color. So now what does this number represent? Basically, what happens is when you look at these rings, the first two rings represent the first two significant figures. So, the we call these as color band. So, the first two bands will represent the first two significant figures. Right? The third band will represent so first two band here is let us suppose this is my first band this is my second band so the first two bands represent the first two significant figures the third band represents the decimal multiplier okay and what about the last band the last band represents the tolerance what is tolerance tolerance is nothing but the possible variation in percentage about the indicated values. It means the last band tells us that to what percentage the value which you have calculated is correct. So this for this tolerance we normally have gold and silver. So when you have gold it is 5% tolerance and when you have silver it is 10% tolerance. Okay and when you have no color it is 20% tolerance. So it goes like this. Okay, so now let us calculate for this one. If you see, the first band is yellow, the next band is red and the third one is green and what do you have the next one? Let us see, this is gold. Okay, so let us calculate the value. So the first band is yellow. So what does yellow stand for? Yellow stands for 4. The next band is red. So red stands for 2. So this says that the first two bands represent the first two significant figures. So we got the first two significant figures. The third band is green and green stands for, here if you go, green stands for 5. So what is this 5? 5 is the decimal multiplier. That means this into 10 to the power 5. 
So this 5 is determined by the third band. Okay. So this is the value of the resistance. And the last band which is gold here, it represents to what percentage this value is correct. So this will be plus minus 5%. So by looking at this resistor, you can say that the value of the resistance is 42 into 10 to the power 5 ohms plus minus 5 percent. That means this value can be incorrect for by plus 5 percent or minus 5 percent. So this is how we calculate. Now sometimes it might happen that there are more than four bands. In that case, what happened? There is one extra significant figure which gets added here. Like let us suppose had there been one more band, say black. In that case, black stands for 0. So, it would have been 4 to 0 into 10 to the power 5. So, I hope you understood how do we do it. So, please remember this BB Roy of Great Britain has very good wife. This will help you. Now, if you look at this chart, it will make things simple. It talks about 4 band color code, which I just now told you. It also talks about 5 band color code as well as 6 band color code. That means if the number of bands increase, what happens? Look at this one. Here you have 25 kilo ohms plus minus 5 percent. Here you have 460 kilo ohms. Here you have 276 ohms plus minus 5 percent. So your uh, number of significant figures increase when your number of bands increase. Right? Now also here if you see the multiplier other than silver and gold, you also have some other you also have some other tolerance other than silver and gold mostly in your textbooks you will find silver and gold but other than silver and gold also there are certain other colors like brown red green so those values are also given in this chart this temperature coefficient you can ignore it for now because this temperature coefficient doesn't play a role at this level so but for your information you can just consider that if a sixth band is there that means the temperature coefficient has come into play right so this is how you have to find out the value of resistance of carbon resistors let us look at some examples let us suppose we have this carbon resistor so this is brown this is green this is red and what is this? This is gold, right? So what does brown stand for? Brown is 1. What is green? Green is 5. So I got the first two significant figures. So the third one should be decimal multiplier. So into 10 to the power red. What is red? Red is 2. So into 2, this much ohms plus minus 5%. So this is nothing but 1500 ohms plus minus 5%. So this is the value of your resistance. Similarly, let us look at another example. Let us suppose you have this resistor. So what would be the value of this color coded resistor? The, the band which is at a bit far away, which is a bit far away from the other bands, that is considered to be the last band. This, this was just for your information. So your first band starts from here. You have an orange an orange again, then a white and then black and then you have the last band which is brown here. So the first band is orange. Orange stands for 3. The next band is again orange, so another 3. The third band in this case, in this case since you have 4 bands, so you will consider up to 3 significant figures. So the white stands for 9, so it is 3, 3, 9 into 10 to the power black. What is black? Black is 0. So this much ohms plus minus what is brown? Tolerance for brown is 2%. Uh, I'm sorry, it is not 2%, it is 1%. So it is 1%. So this becomes 339 ohms plus minus 1%. So this becomes your resistance. So this is how we calculate the resistance of color-coded carbon resistors. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.